Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Forgive us those things that weigh in our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be that your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have, set, I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give up, get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is a friend, at least, because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nice to uh, be visiting with you again today. We're very fortunate in the life of our church. There's a young lady who's going to be baptized today, and we look forward to that. Um, COVID has made it very hard for us to baptize people as part of our regular worship, so this is going to be really uh, the first baptism in quite a while that we've had as part of our Sunday morning worship, so we're really looking forward to it. God continues to bless us uh, with faith and with new believers, and uh, we're going to celebrate that on this, the uh, seventh Sunday of Pentecost, as we welcome a family into our church and celebrate a new sister in Christ Jesus. Today's gospel from St. Luke actually has a couple parts to it, and I don't know if I can do justice to all of it, but I will touch on some of the parts here that seem obvious and necessary to touch on. In today's gospel, we heard Jesus pray or teach his disciples to pray uh, according to what they believe John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. Apparently, if you were a man of, of faith and you had disciples, you would need to teach them many things. And one of the things perhaps you would teach them is how you pray or how they might choose to pray. And so when a disciple comes to Jesus, he says, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. That should sound fairly familiar. If I coupled it with a selection from um, St. Matthew, you would probably say, hey, Pastor, that sounds a lot like the Lord's Prayer. And you would be right. You would be right. From the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke and a little piece of Scripture we call the doxology, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. That, those three things join together to make the Lord's Prayer. And it is kind of a combination of Scriptures and ideas, but that's become so important in the life of the church that I think it, it is one of the few things that we kind of all know and if I were again to wake you up at three o'clock in the morning out of a dead sleep and ask you to recite the Lord's Prayer, my guess is that all of you watching this video would be able to do so. I do want to remind you when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is giving an example of prayer and not necessarily 
um, a hard document, a hard version of prayer, that this is the prayer you must pray. He's teaching you it should sound like this. And so if you examine the Lord's Prayer, perhaps there are some things you might want to introduce into your own prayers, into your own personal prayers. Uh, I think that would be really helpful for all of us. Um, this prayer uh, focuses on several different uh, items, and it's worth spending some time looking at and considering in our own praying. So take a look at that. If that weren't enough, Jesus goes on to say to them, uh, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says to a friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me, the door is already closed, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. Lots of words conveying this idea of persistence. Persistence. And it's nice that it's attached to the Lord's Prayer. I think that's what Jesus was trying to get to, this idea of persistent prayer. And persistent prayer is a blessing to those we pray for, as well as to the one who prays. I think sometimes we forget the value of praying, not only for those who are to receive blessings, but to those who are, who are praying themselves. A discipline of regular prayer will change your life, I can assure you. Especially if you recognize how many people probably should be prayed for, or what circumstances are, are worth praying for. And I think as you identify those things, and as you lift these concerns and people's names up in prayer, your life has to change for the better. So I encourage you to do that. In this Gospel reading, we hear one other thing about what we can expect when we pray. So Jesus goes on to say, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who, receive, who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. That's a wonderful thing to know, although I want to I wanna give you an asterisk next to it. If you ask to win the lottery, you may not win the lottery. If you ask to not pay taxes next year, you still may pay taxes next year. If you ask for a bigger house or a more beautiful car or a more attractive spouse, those things may not necessarily be given to you. God gives us what we need, not necessarily everything we may ask for. And that's one of the things I think I want to hold up here. But the idea that asking provides an answer, that, that requesting something will provide some sort of answer is a good thing to know about. That seeking will provide some answer to your search, and that knocking doors will be open to you. God will hear your prayer, and God will answer it. There are, of course, many ways to answer a prayer. God could, of course, give you exactly what you ask for. That's more about you asking for the right thing than God necessarily listening to you intently. If you ask for justice or mercy or kindness, there's at least a good possibility in some form you'll receive it. Uh, but when it comes down to prayer, the focus of this, this uh, scripture really is on what God will give. God not only will answer every prayer, and certainly he can answer with a yes or a no or a wait. Sometimes wait is hard to deal with. But we know that God answers with good answers. The last portion of the scripture is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, don't be offended, you are sinners, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So this idea of asking and receiving and receiving something good, that's what prayer is about. That's enough. That doesn't answer all your questions. That doesn't make it simple. But it's enough knowing that God loves you so much, he will hear your prayer. And he will answer, and your answer will be a good answer, not an evil answer. Not one that leads you into, into pain or, or into difficult circumstances. That one that, that builds you up, perhaps teaches you, and brings you to a better place. Well, for us, as we hear these scriptures today, we're willing to 
Build up a discipline of prayer. If you don't have a discipline of prayer, it's always good to pray at least twice a day, once when you get up, once when you're ready to go to bed. Perhaps pray when you receive a meal, a blessing over a meal, not just at Thanksgiving and Christmas. But to build up a, a discipline of prayer, which is a blessing to you and a blessing to others. Try it. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't hurt. And I have every reason to believe that God will bless you as you strive to pray to him for the good of others in Jesus' name. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray with confidence. Joined in baptism, we pray for our new sister in faith and all those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us be ever faithful in our fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and desire to seek peace and justice for all people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rooted in Christ, we pray for the church. Emboldened church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and equip us to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in creation, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Give us wisdom to protect all that you have made good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Trusting in your mercy, we pray for the nations of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities to do what is right and good and guide them to be a blessing to those they serve. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Persistent in prayer, we pray for those who suffer in any way. Bring healing and wholeness to those who are sick, ill, or injured. We especially pray for everyone on our prayer list and all who grieve the loss of a loved one. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless our prayer group and our outreach ministries. Teach us that we are stronger in faith when we join together than when we follow apart. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who now rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing your great glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.